A very warm welcome to you, Mr. Kenny Chu. For the benefit of all our viewers, let me introduce you. You're a former conservative MP from British Columbia in Canada. Thank you so much for giving us your precious time. Now, the polls for Canada. Well, thank you for having me. Right. The polls for Canada's 2021 federal election had predicted your re election, that too by a landslide victory. And yet you lost from your seat of Steveston, Richmond East. While we are aware that polls cannot be accurate all the time, you've gone on record to say that China's alleged election meddling is the reason you lost your seat. Why do you say so? And how does China's alleged election interference work out in Canada? Well, first of all, Akanshar, I mean, like you said, elections, it's a complicated uh, oper operations. And there are many, many factors at play. In 2021, I lost to my uh, um, opposition uh, candidate, uh, Mr. Parm Baines. And uh, one of the contributing factor uh, that I allege was the uh, foreign interference by the uh, Chinese Communist Party's uh, regime. And that was backed up by uh, many of the uh, third party research uh, organizations, such as the Atlantic Council, such as the McGill University data scientists, um, and as well as uh, this info watch. And then finally, in 2022, explosive whistleblower report uh, covered by uh, Canada's Global News, as well as Globe and Mail. Um, right. It is important to understand that uh, the CCP China, it's not the only country that ha has been long identified as those who are uh, very active in interfering uh, Canada's. And uh, it is an incident that uh, that I, I try to bring up uh, as much um, attention uh, to. And it's also important to, uh, to say that, to understand that. It's not the first time that I've lost. Uh, I contested the, this writing with a former uh, liberal member of parliament in 2015, and I lost to him. And so 20, 2019, uh, I took the writing. And then 2021, uh, in the midst of pandemic, uh, our prime minister, Justin Trudeau, called the uh, federal election, and I lost to Mr. Parm Baines. So right. uh, I did not complain about foreign interference in 2015. So this is not because I'm a sore loser. Uh, you know, supporters of China are in fact quick in saying or uh, countering that allegation by saying that it is the the fact that, you know, these people who were contesting have lost out. That is why they are blaming China, uh, which is why I want to know from you, how does alleged election interference work out? Is it in the form of disinformation? disinformation? How is China working this out? Well, to start uh, the answer, uh, first of all, the Chinese ambition, the CCP, uh, all, I always call it the Communist Chinese Party, um, the Chinese Communist Party. It's it's not, you know, just recently being ambitious in interfering with uh, Canada and also uh, impacting our daily lives. Uh, it's been long reported. Uh, by the Canadian security intelligence apparatus that, uh, among others, like Russia, uh, Iran, uh, China has been uh, actively trying to interfere with uh, Canada, infiltrating, et cetera, et cetera. So in 2021, it, it just became the, the, uh, the culminating uh, point. And uh, I think they are confident enough that they would be able to use the the level of this information to have an impact. And like I said, it's a contributing factor. All right. And in this particular case, I believe that it's contributing to um, my defeat. Did you report your allegations to law in enforcement after your defeat in 2021? If no, then why not so? Well, <laughs> Yes, I, I've uh, I've spoken up about the concern that I have. One of the one of the issue is that uh, when I was a member of parliament, I became the first to propose a foreign interference influence transparency uh, scheme, a registry, and that had become uh, a, a focus point of many of the attack and. 
And during the election, there were disinformation uh, telling many of my diaspora uh, compatriot uh, of Chinese descent that uh, I am anti-Asian, that I hate Chinese, that I, uh, I will betray them. And that's why during the election, I've seen, uh, even though it was only 22 months from the last election, I've seen a significant swing and changes uh, to my constituents' attitude. And that's the, uh, as the Canadian Security Intelligence Service has confirmed and the whistleblower report, that it's due to the organized disinformation campaign against me. It's, it should be highlighted that it's not just you who's under Beijing scanner. Um, Canada's intelligence agency has warned that half a dozen elected officials, current and former, have been targeted by Beijing. That includes Jenny Kwan, who's a lawmaker from Vancouver, and Richard Lee, a city councillor in British Columbia. Both are Beijing critics. Has China, in your view, doubled down on its assertive nationalist policy towards the diaspora under Xi Jinping's rule? Well, I'm no expert in, um, you know, China policy, <clears throat> pardon me, in, in um, you know, synology and all that. But from what people have observed, from what I have read, that it looks like uh, Xi Jinping, um, under his uh, rule for the past uh, 10 years, uh, China has become uh, emboldened. Uh, and, and very confident in asserting uh, its way of governments, and it's been it's been acting very aggressively on the diplomatic uh, scene, and in fact, to the point that uh, people had had a term called wolf warrior diplomacy, and and asserting itself not just in Canada, but also in Australia, for example, and also USA, the the UK and other uh, allies a few years back, I think uh, over five years, they have established uh, a foreign influence registry act similar to what I propose and and uh, to, uh, to in an attempt to to stop to to backtrack the the kind of influence that uh, China was able to make in that country. Uh, that been corruption there are been uh, agents acting on behalf of them. Mr. Chiu, I'm going to talk about um, the foreign agents registry as well. But before I do that, um, you know, there it's interesting that you mentioned about those intelligence reports that have been published. Uh, the Globe and Mail have published one such report citing Canadian intelligence documents that describe these alleged Chinese efforts to oust Canadian candidates that are seen as unfriendly to Beijing. Despite such intelligence, why hasn't the Trudeau government taken <laughs> adequate action against alleged Chinese intervention? Also, why isn't the RCMP not investigating? Well, I can show that's a, that's a question only Justin Trudeau can answer. Uh, I can only speculate. I don't know the answer to that. If any ordinary person would wonder why, because there had been, like I said, uh, for years, the Canadian Security Intelligence Services CSIS has published a report sounding the alarm of its concern to at the top three countries that are um, infiltrating and, and impacting Canada, namely China, Russia, and Iran. That's why I want uh, to ask from you, do you, do you believe that Justin Trudeau is turning a blind eye to these reports? So, uh, from, from his action, it seems like he's not taking the same level of concern and action as he did uh, in a high-profile way, announcing, uh, uh, you know, implicating uh, that... Uh, that India government is behind a assassination of a Canadian citizen in Canada. Uh, it's important to understand that for years, uh, he was forced to take action in recognizing uh, that the, the Chinese have been infiltrating, impacting our, our uh, electoral system. And recently, actually only, only days after his, his uh, highly dramatic uh, announcement in the 
in the House of Commons, uh, the Global News has actually reported that uh, somebody who was targeted by uh, China and who previously announced that he's not going to uh, suicide and kill himself had been found dead in, uh, right. in BC, in British Columbia. And so it looks like that the, the prime minister has a different level of concern vis-a-vis uh, -vis with uh, China and also uh, India. So, so you're saying that the prime minister did not take action uh, for that death, which was equally suspicious, but there was no action taken by the prime minister or even um, much open condemnation coming from him like we've seen in the case of Nijar's killing. Well, first of all, uh, it is not right to have um, a foreign government interfering with a Canadian business. And I stand with the government of Canada in rejecting that. It doesn't matter whether it's from China, Iran, or Russia, or India. It's not correct. But the way he did it was actually uh, the worst. It's unprofessional. Mm. It's mm. Uh, childish. Um, it's dramatic. It seems to suggest that uh, he's trying to play some uh, domestic politics uh, with the file. And it's unfortunate because uh, the Western countries like U.S. and U.K. and Australia, we're trying to work with the biggest democratic country in the world, India, in doing so. So uh, it's important to assert uh, the Canadian position, but at the same time, doing it professionally, maturely, right. and diplomatically. And unfortunately, can... they are talking about all these now, but it's too late. Considering India and uh, Canada's uh, bilateral relationship goes a long way because of the people-to-people -people ties. But that brings me to my next question. The U.S. is cracking down on Chinese police stations with a tool Canada still doesn't have, and that's a foreign agent's registry, something that you were just talking about. Which also begs the question, is Prime Minister Trudeau using the Khalistan issue and the diplomatic row with India to divert attention from Chinese interference reports in Canada? Well, you may speculate on that, but I have no comment on it. It would seem like a logical uh, conclusion to to the ordinary Canadians, such as myself as well. But what what when we look at the the evidence that they are dragging the heels on foreign registry, foreign interference registry, uh, something that is uh, important and impactful enough uh, to the Chinese communists that even CSIS are saying was the reason be, uh, behind why their special interest in Steve's and Richmond East in my defeating. So it would seem that if uh, Justin Trudeau is interested in safeguarding uh, Canada and our de uh, democracy and our uh, national security, that he would actually be very supportive. And yet, uh, many years now after I propose, there's still no registry or any shadow of it. All right. Uh, Mr. Chu, eight Sikh youths have been arrested this week under Arms Act in Brampton. While the police crackdown in Brampton is not being linked to any Khalistani move, uh, movement, instead it's being said that it focuses on drugs and weapon operations in the larger scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Isn't this crackdown giving credence to India's claims about how the Khalistan elements have turned Canada into a hub of criminal activity? And I know so because the secular Sikhs are not supportive of these fringe, uh, fringe elements. They're saying that they do not feel safe in the Gurudwaras and that even the Sikh Gurudwaras do not have space for such unhealthy fringe elements that are bringing a bad name to Sikhism. Well, I understand the dynamics um, to, this, to a certain extent um, between the the uh, Khalistanis and also um, in Indian in general um, and also in in Canada how they are how active it's the how active and vocal is these uh, small majority I mean minority people and and uh, but I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna entertain that uh, you know they they are I'm not gonna apply labels. To any communities, I you know there have been there have been gang activities among the Chinese and many other ethnic groups as well. And in general, the friends that I've met from the the, the Punjab province, from the Sikh faith, has shown me that they they believe in peace, 
they believe in love and in helping uh, people who are needed in help. And these are predominantly majority of the people. Uh, will there be bad apples just like any other communities? Yes. The problem, uh, Akansha, is that the the dealing with uh, gang activities uh, by by this current government, it's yes, appalling. It's the failure of the uh, government. Instead of it's the failure of the government to address it's, it's of, their inability to crack down uh, on this kind of criminal activity. As you said, it could come from any diaspora. But the fact is, it, 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 it's upon the government to take adequate action and what it does to curb such kind of criminal activity. Allow me to use an example. Uh, in Canada, there, there has been gun ownership, but unlike the United States of America, it's already very tightly controlled and regulated. Uh, and, and instead of addressing the 97% of gun crimes that are with illegal guns smuggled from the United States, this current government had decided to continue to clamp down on legal gun owners. And therefore, the activity that they have, other than be able to stoke the fear in many of the people and get, uh, get, get votes from them, uh, there have been zero impact on the current crime scenario. Uh, instead, what he should have done is to uh, put focus and resources in manning our borders with the USA to make sure that we stop the flood of illegal guns coming from that country. And, and, uh, and that would have effectively starved these gangsters from having the source of uh, uh, weapons that they cho choose, which is guns. And unfortunately, this government has no uh, you know, interest in tackling the real problem. They, they, they're more interested in, in the optics of, uh, of any and, and that problem that's, also, uh, and that problem also includes not just uh, drugs or weapons, illegal weapons, but it also includes death threats being issued to uh, Indian diplomats. Uh, threats being issued, uh, the consulates and Indian temples, uh, Hindu temples being vandalized. Uh, and that is where the issue also comes. You, How much, I mean, you ca cannot show floats uh, in, uh, you know, there was... Uh, the, there were flo there were floats that were celebrating the fo uh, former prime minister's Indira Gandhi's assassination, and that cannot be taken in the name of freedom of expression. Uh, also, many in India are now raising questions about the West's selective intervention because of Trudeau's accusation have made global headlines. Why didn't the attacks on Indian consulates get the same kind of international attention? Why isn't the Five Eye Alliance as concerned about India's security? I mean, primarily the United States, because we've heard an intervention come in from the US, a country that's, I mean, and, and for India, which is also a significant partner to the Five Eye Alliance right now, because of its role in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, Akisha, it's uh, it's a very complex um, and, and multifaceted uh, uh, question that you have asked. Allow me to unpack it a little bit by by focusing on the the drug problem. Say, for example, um, you know, I I'm an ethnic Chinese myself. I grew up in uh, in Hong Kong uh, in in a Chinese traditional Chinese family, and and both China and India are long history. Uh, countries of very long history, and we always focus on the health and the well-being of people. Uh, and um, uh, you know, and there have been a lot of uh, uh, South Asians and, and Chinese and Asians living in British Columbia, the province that that I live in right now. But instead of uh, focusing on how do we prevent younger people from falling into drugs and addiction, this Government, this federal government had worked with the NDP, uh, the New Democrat, uh, a, a left and a left-leaning uh, party, a le you know, a leftist party, to to have an, uh, a two years experiment, a waiver on our drug policy, allowing. And you, of course, know that uh, under Justin Trudeau, uh, we have already completely legalized marijuana, but th under this scheme with the provincial government. Uh, we in British Columbia will also be decriminalized uh, hard drugs. We're talking about narcotics. We're talking about 
methamphetamines, we're talking about uh, cocaine, et cetera, et cetera. Anywhere when you carry 2.5 gram or under, then right. you will not be charged criminally. And so this is the kind of trajectory and, and direction. And they are more interested in protecting uh, criminals rather than the victims of criminals. And of mm. course, there, are, there have been obligations, uh, international obligations, protecting diplomats that are stationed in Canada. But so, instead, unfortunately, some, somebody who's attempted to assassinate uh, Indian diplomats were invited to go along with the uh, prime minister uh, tour and uh, was film uh, was was pictured uh, camera in a camera picture uh, with uh, Mrs. Uh, Trudeau herself in India. That's just that's just dumb. That's just not good right. diplomat or diplomacy. And, and it's that's not good that di well uh, domestic with policies. Right. No, well, I was just saying that that can you didn't blame India down. on that? Can you blame India? You can't blame India. We were talking about somebody who's attempted and proven in Canadian's court of his action to assassin, assassinate somebody, uh, uh, you know, of uh, Indian officials in Canada, and yet the prime minister uh, brought him along, and it, it sends a completely wrong message to this allies that uh, that we're trying to court and to deepen our relationship. And unfortunately, he has just been not professional, immature, and uh, childish in playing this politics. Right. And, and and I want to close with this last question. First, um, uh, Mr. Trudeau goes uh, public in um, the Canadian Parliament, making those accusations provoking India. Now he's seeking private discussion. Uh, well, if there's credible evidence, what do you make of uh, this request for a private in, in uh, discussion? One that Justin Trudeau, I mean, this after... Uh, he's claimed that he has credible evidence and has already claimed to possess this tattoo in the Canadian Parliament. How do you see uh, a forward solution for this diplomatic row that India and Canada are facing? Well, first of all, let me correct you. He said in the House of Commons in Canada that uh, there has been credible allegation. He never provided any evidence to right, Canadians or parliamentarians. He claims to have that evidence. Exactly, exactly. And and by the way, uh, when it comes to China's interference with uh, with Canada, he's tied himself with all these layers of bureaucracies. For example, there is the National Security Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarian, NCCOP. And these people have security clearance to look at all the evidence. I don't understand why he did not present this credible allegations and intelligence information to that committee, for example, to talk about it, to to uh, iron out a strategy that is nonpartisan, that is cross party, that is uh, for senators and also for uh, uh, House of Commons MPs, right. so that we can actually face the same challenge ourselves. So uh, one cannot avoid. Uh, the conclusion that Mr. Trudeau is playing domestic policy and trying to gain votes uh, with his immature and unprofessional um, action that he taken, how do you how do you wind back from that? Uh, the Foreign uh, Affairs Minister uh, Melanie Jolie were pounding on the mic and the desk when uh, on on the September uh, 19th announcement accusing India of the uh, unthinkable action. But now she's saying, oh, we will, we're better off to uh, uh, diplomacy in, in silence or in quietness. How do you do that when you first pound the desk, pointing the finger at a foreign country without tabling any shred of evidence? Um, I, I think, unfortunately, it would be very difficult for the current uh, Modi government to talk to the current uh, liberal Trudeau government uh, and and try to amend this, you know, completely frozen, uh, right. important uh, relationship between Canada and China and India. And I think it, you'll have to wait for another uh, break uh, of government to uh, to change that. 
It seems like it, but I'm sure you feel a deep sense of worry, Mr. Chu, over what's happening in your country. I do hope there's timely action taken to arrest the situation at hand, whether it's the Khalistan issue or uh, alleged Chinese election interference as well. On that note, let me close this interview. Many yeah. thanks to you, Mr. Chu, for joining in and sharing your precious time with us here at CNN News 80. Thank you, Akin Shah. All right, Mr. Sorry. Chu, I think that went very yeah, well. Thank I can you. Happy. I, sorry, I, I missed the opportunity to mention our experience in separatist um, movement vis-a-vis uh, -vis Quebec. That's uh, actually very important, and it kind of drives uh, Canada's approach to uh, separatism, um, although you know, nonviolent pursuit of separatism. But uh, maybe in, in the next uh, opportunity that we can actually I, share a little more. I'll try and touch base again with you because I think um, I, I, you have a lot of knowledge and you're throwing uh, knowledge, I mean, you're throwing light on aspects which uh, come from very different angles as well, primarily the Chinese election interference as well. That's a very crucial, mm -hmm. significant aspect. So I am going to touch base again with you, Mr. Chu. It was a pleasure to speak to you. Sure. Also, um, I Thank will you. be messaging you. I'll be messaging you after uh, we end this conversation. I'll message you with uh, some uh, leads, perhaps. Okay. All right. Thank you, Akin Shah, for giving me the opportunity. You have a good day, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.